Uh, welcome to today's webinar on what's new in Dynamics GP 2018. I am the director of marketing at Encore, and I handle the webinar series for them. We've got a a lot of great content, uh, not just in this webinar, but many others throughout uh, 2018. We've got a very uh, extensive lineup that we're working on, and we'll be covering Dynamics GP, um, different aspects of Power BI, we'll have some Office 365, and then other Dynamics products such as CRM as well. So there's a lot of great stuff coming up throughout the year. I will, uh, at the end of this webinar, have a, some information for you about the content today, but also about the webinar series in general and where you can go to find out other topics and register for other uh, online events. So please be on the lookout for that. And before we get started into the heavy content, I'm going to just do a little bit of housekeeping. So on your GoToWebinar panel, you're going to see that on the right side of your screen most likely. There's a little orange arrow up at the top. Just click that so it pops out of the way and you're able to see more of the presentation. Click it again if you want it to pop back out, and that way you can ask a question. So we do have a, a lot to cover today, and we don't want to get off track. We want to make sure we stay on time so we get, a, get to everything. We ask that you submit your questions this way, and I will be collecting those behind the scenes in a queue. At the end of the presentation, I will feed those to our presenter, and he'll be answering them one by one. If there's anything that I can do for you behind the scenes, if there's any audio issues or any uh, questions about the series or anything at all, please feel free to feed those in as well, and I'm happy to chat with you in this questions pane uh, to address anything that you need. So a little bit about Encore. I scanned through re the registrations for today and saw that most of you are familiar with us, but I did see that some of you are new. So uh, just a little bit who we are. We've been serving uh, Dynamics customers for over 25 years in the Pacific Northwest US and in Canada. Uh, Microsoft Gold Certified Partner. We've got over 130 dedicated certified professionals that have worked in all areas of Dynamics, GP, NA, NAV, AX, CRM and now Dynamics 365 and then including that includes Power BI. So a lot of lot of different um, expertise on our team. Then we've got quite a few different awards that have been coming through over the years. Some of our bigger ones are listed here. And then we also our solutions that we provide. I did mention a few of those. Um, just gives you kind of a a visual of the world that we we do support and also provide. Um, various services against. And our locations, I did mention Pacific Northwest US, we've got offices in Seattle and Portland, and then of course our uh, our core offices in Calgary and, or excuse me, in uh, Winnipeg is our headquarters, Calgary and Vancouver. So that's enough from me. This is Raymond Wong. He is one of the, our senior solutions specialists uh, with a focus on Dynamics GP. He's put together a great slide deck for us today to go over the newest features that are going to be coming up. We know a lot of people are excited about this new release. And let me make sure I've got him unmuted. Raymond, can you hear us okay? Yes, thank you. Great. I'm going to hand you the presentation right now. You should see uh, that acceptance window popping up for you. Okay. And as a side note, as as Raymond's taking the presentation back, uh, we will be where we are recording today's presentation. So at the end of this, I will send you out an email with a link to that recording as well as the slide deck. Okay, we can okay. see your screen. Great, Raymond looks good. I'll let you take it away. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Jess. Hi, my name is Raymond Wong. I am on from the Dynamics GP team. And just a brief introduction is I've been uh, consulting for Dynamics GP for the last 12 plus years. And uh, I uh, related to this is I've been involved with uh, over 150 plus upgrades. So that's one of the first things that we'll talk about is just the upgrade paths and how we can upgrade uh, from that perspective. Um, so, our, so our agenda today is we'll talk a little bit about the upgrade and then we'll talk about some of the enhancements or some of the new features in there. So I've split it off to five main areas. So it'll be the platform and system-wide enhancements, uh, the new workflow, which is on the version 4.0, uh, some of the user in, uh, experience enhancements, and some of the financial enhancements in there. Um, there are over 50 plus features and updates in the GP 2018. So we picked off some of the highlights and some of the items uh, that we can showcase for you. Um, so moving on ahead here, 
Um, so from an upgrade perspective, uh, personally, uh, I've been involved with a lot of the upgrades, uh, like I mentioned, over 150 plus of them uh, throughout my last 12 years of my career. And uh, I've personally upgraded my own Dynamics GP image from GP 2016 to 2018, and there weren't any issues. Um, I've done upgrades from as far as, or far back as from GP version 6 all the way up to GP 2018. There are different paths and different ways. So some of them take one step, some of them take two steps, depending on which version you're on. Um, there is a Microsoft article, which um, I'll provide to Jess, and she'll send it out to you a little bit after the presentation. And you'll be able to see which version you're on and which service packs you need to install, or which is the upgrade if you need to jump from two versions or three versions, or if it's just a one version jump against it. Um, just a little bit of experience on my upgrade, there wasn't any issues. I had two companies, had some uh, DEX customizations. Uh, the base GP and all the functionality worked, everything worked perfectly fine, and there weren't any issues on the upgrade. Um, there is a blog by the Escalation Engineer, Terry Healy, and she posts um, whoever subscribed to her, uh, her email chain and it tells you about if there are any issues or if there's anything that's um, any issues for the upgrade or any features or enhancements. So there's two uh, known issues with the upgrade that did occur with them. Um, they're more of a data cleanup issue. So the two things were the analytical accounting balance brought forward uh, for the year in closing and also the payables uh, attached document. So these are just some data issues that causes the upgrades to hang up. But uh, Microsoft does provide the scripts free of charge um, that you can do to analyze your data and clean up those abandoned records or those corrupt records and it'll make the upgrade smooth. So from that aspect, um, the paths and any issues, there weren't any issues for the upgrade. From a document's point of view, there's a couple documents put out by uh, Microsoft, which uh, I'll provide to Jess and she'll be able to send you a link for them. Uh, one of them is a What's New document, which shows you the progression from Dynamics GP. I think it goes back far back as from 2013 to 2015 to 2016 and then to 2018. And it shows you the different uh, features and functions that it's added for each of the version. There's also a couple other documents that I have, which there's one document um, that my coworker found on the uh, while doing some research, and it shows uh, all the different features for every module from GP9 all the way up to GP uh, 2016, I believe, or 20 yeah 2016, and then you'll be able to um, you'll be able to look at which of the features are available. So the reason why I'm mentioning that is because some of the features, um, maybe in one of the other versions or one of the upgrades or maybe the latest version, that um, it's probably not commonly used, but it could uh, help your business and the efficiencies with that aspects. Um, like I said, I've been involved with many upgrades and um, I can tell you some of this, all the upgrades have been successful that I've done and they've all had a 0% uh, percent, uh, rollback from that aspect. So if there's any questions from an upgrade perspective, um, feel free to contact me. Uh, the contact information was on the first slide and it's also will be provided at the end of the uh, presentation. So from that aspect, um, that's just a little bit on the upgrade portion and um, things that you can expect from there. Uh, I haven't uh, started in, in about next week's time, I will be testing out some of the Smart Connect upgrades and some of the uh, third-party products, for example, Winsoft and MEM uh, for Brian and Stream and those items. Uh, I personally haven't tested the upgrade on those versions, but they're pretty up to speed on that. And one thing I forgot to mention was the DVD was actually released about a week and a half, about two weeks ago uh, from Microsoft. Uh, we've been getting glimpses and bits and pieces of what are some of the new features in uh, Dynamics GP 2018. So uh, although I do have a working demo environment, um, most of the slides that we'll be showing will be more of a screenshot from a static point of view because it does take time for some of the features to be set up. So from an efficiency point of view, we'll be showing some slides of some of the new features. So that's the first step, which is the uh, first item that we're talking about, which is the upgrade. The next thing we'll be talking about is the platform and system-wide enhancements. Um, one of the features that they introduced, I believe, in GP 2013 was the document attachment. So they built the document attachment. Um, you'll be able to store documents, and it'll be stored on the SQL server, and you'll be 
what they did was every version they added to more and more windows. So now the document attach window, as you can see, here, here's a setup window. You'll be able to attach to most uh, master record windows, most of the inquiry windows, and most of the transaction entry windows. Um, they try to make the document attach available in most of the common entry windows and their corresponding inquiry windows, so we'll be able to look up a, um, supporting documents for a transaction or for a master file, for example, here. So what I'm going to show you here is, as you can see from the screenshots, um, we'll be talking about a little bit about the workflow, so you'll be able to move the workflow from, say, example, from the customer maintenance, which is your customer master file, you'll be able to flow in the workflow to, um, for delegation purposes, uh, from your workflow. So as you can see here, here's one of the new windows that they've added the attachment to, which is the receivables transaction entry. From this window, as you can see here in the red square here, you'll be able to attach documents and you'll be able to track it from the perspective, from the audit perspective, where you'll be able to track who attached the document, what time it was, and it'll be saved, saved securely onto your server. And from that aspect, you'll be able to track if somebody has deleted it or if somebody has modified it and from that perspective. Receivables transaction entry, which is the AR transaction entry window, which is where they added the uh, document attach. Um, they've also um, added, um, like I said, to many windows. So another window that they added the document attach, which is the transaction entry window for the general ledger. So you'll be able to provide uh, or attach supporting documents for this journal entry from that perspective. And it'll be similar to the attachments which we've seen, the progression, they've added to more and more windows, and you'll be able to, like I mentioned, track it, you'll be able to see the files when it was attached, and it's also saved on your SQL database. So before the document attachment files were saved in a location on your server, now these files are uh, saved on uh, securely onto your SQL server itself. So in, and another aspect is when your database is being backed up, the attachments will get backed up also. Um, right now they've added also to the employee inquiry window, which is very similar from that perspective. There's a notes button there. This is for uh, for uh, US payroll and HR, and uh, they haven't added it to the Canadian payroll yet. So which brings up another topic. All of these enhancements and all of these, uh, these uh, features, what happens is on Microsoft's website, um, if there's a specific feature that clients or customers that are after, you can vote on them, and as soon as they get attention or enough votes, they will actually put it on to the next release uh, or the next releases in their roadmap in Dynamics GP. So they're always listening and always um, ready to, you know, try to enhance the product itself to make it better and more usable. Uh, one more for our uh, U.S. clients and base. They've also added the attachment onto the I-9 form, so you'll be able to attach documents against it. As you can see there, once you've attached the documents, um, before some of the inquiry windows, you weren't able to view any of the, you weren't able to view the documents. But now they've added the inquiry window, so it flows from the transaction itself to the actual uh, transact, or sorry, the transaction itself to the inquiry window itself. So they've added it to the vendor, the customer, the project and PA project inquiry window. So the next few slides that we're gonna show is just to show some of the, uh, areas where it can attach against there. As you can see on the top left-hand corner, when you're inquiring a vendor, you'll be able to see the attach, um, supporting documents for this vendor. So that's the attachment that they've added. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to improve the experience and also to uh, improve on the usability and efficiencies of uh, Dynamics GP, where it's going to more of a paperless solution where you can actually inquire and look up stuff within Dynamics GP itself there. So the first window here is the vendor inquiry, and we're just going to browse through these few things here. So on the customer master inquiry, they added that too. For project counting, for the people that are using project counting, they have the attachment against there. It's the yellow button on the right-hand side there. And also in the project inquiry window, the, attached, the advanced attached notes is in there also. 
So that's some of the basic usability um, enhancements that they've added to Dynamics GP 2018. So it's been a progression. So from GP 2013, where they introduced the new document attached, they've added more and more windows and more and more features against it for 2015, 2016, and now 2018. Um, the next topic we're going to look at is workflow. Workflow is uh, basically what workflow can do is you can uh, define workflows uh, from transactions itself. So, for example, one of the new workflows that they've added is the general account, a general ledger account approval workflow, and uh, that's for an approval process for adding and editing, and posting accounts there. So, workflow you can see that uh, it's it's been in other areas, for example, the AP module, yeah, um, AP invoice module, the purchase orders itself, so you can have a workflow against it. So it will go through, um, it will be able to, you'll be able to define a workflow and you'll be able to submit transactions or creating accounts against two approvers and you can delegate it and depending on their rights, they'll be able to approve it and then that entry will be finalized in the system when it's created there. So workflow is on version 4.0, uh, 4.0 iteration right now. So they start out with some basic workflows, for example, the AP, and then now they've added more and more against it. As you can see here, this is the <clears throat> workflow that they have here. So one of the new ones that they created is the general ledger account approval workflow. So basically in this workflow here, as you can see here, you can assign it to a user and there's a time limit against it and it can send predefined messages with information from it. So what this one does is when you're creating a new posting account or a GL account here, you'll be able to submit it for approval and then it, uh, users won't be able to access or use or create that. Uh, general ledger account until that's been approved itself against it. And there's also an audit tracking and trail against it. Um, as you can see here from this window here, there's the workflow maintenance, so you can have specific uh, email messages that you can pull out. As you can see in this window, there's some uh, variable uh, fields in there. So for example, the account number, which will pull directly from the approval. So it's not a static, there's there's a basic email email uh, template in here, but it also pull the uh, relevant information, the variable information. So for example, when this task is due, the deadline, or what the number is, what the category is, what comments are, and what the general ledger account is. So it's very uh, dynamic in that perspective there. They've also added the, the workflow to the purchasing invoice approval here. So for example, right here, you can see there's one step here, and uh, you'll be able to, when you have a purchase invoice, before it's uh, you're allowed to, you have to approve it before it's allowed to be posted and for the invoice to be paid. So the purchasing invoice approval workflow is something that they've new, newly added in Dynamics GP 2018. Uh, another area that they've added to it is the receiving transaction from, uh, from the purchasing side. So after the PO, when you receive an item, it has to be approved before the items can be entered into the system and also affect the inventory against it. As you can see here, they've added enhancements against the workflows. So now you can have more fields and more criteria. So they've added in the vendor workflow here for the EFT and bank information. So they've added, as you can see here, here's a workflow condition editor. So you can have uh, right here, um, you can have different fields and they've added more and more fields. So each version from version 1 to version 4.0 for each of the workflows, they've allowed more work, more fields uh, in the workflow. So you'll be able to uh, put conditional statements or put different criteria against it from a workflow perspective. They've also added a few more uh, reporting workflows. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but uh, in our PDF file from Microsoft on what's new in 2018, it can show you different reports. So this is an audit report here. It's the workflow history report. So you'll be able to, you know, review the purchase order approvals and what's happening through the workflow, if it got rejected or if it got delegated to somebody from that perspective. Also, from a workflow perspective here, um, they added, uh, you can have reminder emails that can be sent to users who have a workflow, workflow transactions pending in their approval. 
Um, you can add this new option for reminders as a workflow step. And for example, in my next screenshot here, it's assigned to Isaiah Olson and the time limit is eight hours and uh, the reminder is one hours and it has that message that we uh, predefined. And also, as you can see here on the bottom, there's the include document attachments. So depending on um, how it was set up, you can actually have the vendor documents or the transaction document attachments flow with the workflow. So in their email for approval, they can review some of the supporting documents against it. So in a summary, those are some of the few items that they've added to the workflow 4.0. So it's uh, it's a it's it's a it's a pretty good tool right now for having simple approvals. Uh, there are some other third parties for more advanced uh, workflow, <coughs> excuse me, capabilities, but uh, it's a good start to get into it so you can have some approvals and some audit against it for, for transactions and for you know uh, customer and vendor records to be created and to be approved before it, uh, people can use the system. So I'm just gonna take a sip of water here. The next aspect we're going to look at is the user experience enhancements. <clears throat> so Microsoft has listened to uh, the customer base and one of the complaints or one of the concerns that people had was in their bank reconciliation window, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they weren't able to sort transactions by, um, you know, by different types there. So what they did was they added a sort by, which is a type, so you can have it by payment or by deposit, and they added the record where you can have it ascending and descending. So this is one of the user experience enhancements that they've added to the uh, bank reconciliation window here. So it allows the end user or the users itself to be able to uh, review data more efficiently and effectively. As you can tell, this is one of the windows where they added to it. So they also added it to the payable transaction window. So now on the inquiry, you can sort by the document number, the type, the original amount, unapplied amount, document date, and they've also got another filter which is for ascending and descending. Uh, that makes it, when you're looking up uh, information and looking up more details, uh, a little bit easier from that perspective. So they've added that to a few different windows. Um, of course, if you wanted to do more detailed information and if you wanted it to be able to export, we'd use uh, SmartList um, and be able to sort it even further. But from a quick snapshot point of view, if you want to look up some data or if you want to look up a transaction, they've added these additional sort by features in there. As you can see here on the payables transaction and inquiry document, uh, there's the ascending and descending. So that's the second screenshot there. Uh, they've also added it to the payments, uh, payables transaction inquiry by vendor window. So you have those additional sort by items and also you have the ascending and descending uh, from sorting. So as you can see here, that's the sort by. So they added a few more options against it. So you, it's easier for you to find your data. And from there, you'll be able to look up uh, if it's ascending or descending. So it'll make, a little bit, make it a little bit easier because if you use descending, then you can have the latest document on top and it's better than so for example, for some companies have years and years of data, and if you're scrolling up and down, it might take a little bit of time to look through the, uh, the list here. So what happens is with the ascending and descending, it makes things a little bit more efficient from that perspective. So the next window they added was also to the receivables transaction inquiry window, which is very similar in that aspect. So there are more than 10 sort by combinations that now can be used. So document number, amount remaining, document dates, and also sort by options. So they've added that to the receivables uh, transaction inquiry by customer window. As you can see here, the sort by inheres the ascending and descending option. Uh, they've also added it to the receivables transaction inquiry document window. So when you're looking at the document itself, for example, if you have a document number, you'll be able to sort by these items also. And um, speaking of SmartList, we talked a little bit about SmartList there. So now when you're creating a SmartList favorite, you'll be able to uh, create a password against it. So you can have a password if you need to remove the SmartList or, or if you want to edit or modify the uh, SmartList itself there. As usual, the SmartList, you'll be able to uh, make it visible to just everybody in the company. 
just to your specific user, specific user class, or to everybody. And uh, the password, uh, yeah, can be added to any of the smart list favorites. So usually, typically, our clients have issues when somebody is modifying somebody else's smart list. So from this aspect, everybody can see one of the smart list favorites, at least as a password against it, and people can't be adding or changing the filter and the columns against it. Uh, one of the financial enhancements that they put uh, against it is you're able to print a single statement uh, from the customer maintenance window. Before you had to go into the uh, routines and to run the statements, you have to put the filters in against it. Now from here, straight from the customer maintenance window, under print, there's a statement and you'll be able to select uh, a statement ID and you'll be able to print the statement against it. As usual, you'll be able to email a statement to the clients if the email information is in there. And this is one of the enhancements and one of the features that people voted on that uh, Microsoft added to GP 2018. So as you can see here, a lot of these features, some of them are minor, some of them are major. They create um, you know, the user experience and the efficiencies a lot better from that perspective. One of the requests that they had, that users had, was um, when you're using select checks, uh, or they call it select payments now. So what you can do is you can have a payment option ID against it. So in here, what happens is it will save the criteria that you have against it. So for example, if it's for a specific vendor class or if it's a payment priority, and uh, it's similar to a report uh, report writer sorry, uh, uh, report itself where you have a report ID against it. Now there's the payment ID option. So in this option here, you can see there's a test here. And uh, when you're doing future runs, you can use and it'll save these criteria for you and it'll use one of the previous default settings. One of the other features that they added against there, as you can see here on the bottom, is you'll be able to do, oh, sorry, when you're printing um, checks, you can do one payment uh, per, and then there's a vendor, new vendor option. So I'll just jump to the next screen here, and you'll be able to print one check per invoice uh, vendor setting. So that's a new setting that they added to uh, Dynamics GP, and as you can see on, oops, oh sorry, as you can see here, you can do one check per vendor or one check per invoice, and they've added that to the vendor maintenance window against it. So there's little features that they've added against um, the windows to make the user experience a little bit better. Uh, one of the minor things that they've adjusted against here, I'm just gonna go back here. Um, they were having some debates, which this window used to be called select, uh, select payables checks. So they've changed it to payment. Um, so some of the terminology and some of the windows have changed um, just the heading just to make things a little bit easier from that aspect. For those that are using uh, analytical accounting, they've added new features. So prior to GP 2018, there wasn't a way to copy access to analytical dimension codes from one user to another. So what they did was they created a new uh, copy user across analytical accounting dimension codes, and uh, this will expedite uh, granting users new user access to same dimension codes where it's appropriate. So as you can see here, there's a copy button uh, against there. It's right in the middle there. So these are some of the features that they've added against it. Um, from a uh, from a physical point of view, before they had uh, this hold status on the sales transaction, it's the red dot in the middle, which is the stop sign. So for some versions, they had it earlier, I can't remember exactly which versions, and then they took it out, and then um, people voted on that and wanted this option back, and they've added this back against it. So you can actually vis physically see if there's, uh, if there is a hold against this document, so it won't be printed or posted against it. Uh, this feature was added as a request by customers from the previous version. And uh, 
going through my slide deck, um, those were the main features that I had for Dynamics GP 2018. Um, as I mentioned, from Jess's point of view, we'll be providing a document that will show um, the different features between the versions from GP 20, from GP, I believe it was 20, uh, GP 2013 all the way up to GP 2018. And there's different features against it. Um, if there's something of interest, we'll be able to discuss and we'll be able to talk about it and we'll be able to help you implement from that perspective. Um, that's all I have from my presentation. So we'll flip it back to Jess and see if there's any questions in the audience. Great, that was excellent, Raymond. Thank you so much. Uh, just a quick check. Sorry, quick check. You can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, good. Sometimes you can be, you can't be too sure with this GoToWebinar interface. Um, let me see. We do have some questions about to come through here. Let me. I'm going to leave. Go ahead and leave the presentation with you at this time in case any of these questions. Um, are better answered by revisiting your slide deck. So let me just, uh, I have one that says, will there be any changes with MR? No, there are no changes in MR. Um, so this is a little bit off topic. Uh, Microsoft is still deciding. Some people are saying they're using jet reports. Um, there aren't any changes in MR. Uh, or any major changes in that aspect. I think they're still deciding on the roadmap of what to go next. And from last that I heard, it was going to be jet reports, I believe. So don't quote me on that, but uh, I'll double check uh, with my contact at Microsoft. But there aren't any major enhancements um, other than bug fixes for a management reporter. Gotcha. And if anyone is interested in jet reports, we are definitely having those conversations with clients right now. Um, we're happy to get you any information that you need if you're looking at their free version or even the enterprise. So just throwing that out there if you're interested in taking a look at those tools. Um, then right here we've got another that says, in this version, can you attach invoices in the AP module? Uh, I'll have to double check that. So I'll have to take that to uh, aside. I don't remember if they have it in this version or not. Okay, that's great. And uh, Amy, I know you just asked that question. Uh, I think maybe we'd mentioned it at the top of the presentation. If not, um, any of these questions that we either can't get to based on the information or time, or if there's any that just become unwieldy, we will absolutely take offline with you. We can have an email, even a quick call whatever you like, but we will absolutely be getting you answers uh, after the webinar if that's what's needed. Another is, can you elaborate on Power BI functionality? Uh, I didn't put it in my presentation because we actually have, uh, I think, a webinar on the Power BI. So from, I don't have it in my slide deck right now, but they did add, it, add more features of Power BI. And also they're using a different, I think it's called OLAP, I can't remember the exact terminology that they're pulling the data from. So from a Power BI perspective, uh, we actually have a webinar that's going to be just focused on Power BI itself and new features. Uh, the fortunate thing about Power BI, actually I went on some training about a month ago on Power BI, and uh, as you can tell, GP, they're released, the major releases are every six months, and the minor releases are released every, uh, you know, every couple months with service packs and items that has some fixes and some enhancements. Um, Power BI, I believe if I was I was told by one of the developers, it's actually on a month, every month sprint. So they actually release a new version on Power BI itself. So I'm pretty familiar with it um, uh, from that perspective, but they're adding more and more features every month uh, to Power BI itself. So it's actually uh, more advanced from, or more, it's upgrading from that perspective. Gotcha. And um, Raymond is right. We are, do have some Power BI webinars coming up. I don't believe all of them are logged uh, officially yet, but they are in the works. So if anyone does have any questions or would like to uh, maybe throw out some suggestions for specific topic points on those Power BI webinars, I would love to hear them, and we will definitely look at uh, producing content around that. So feel free to shoot out, shoot out any suggestions that you might have. Um, Another question for you, Raymond, is will you be able to scan more than one page into the document attach or attach more than one document uh, at once to a transaction? 
yes, you'll be able to attach uh, multiple transactions against it. So you'll be able to attach multiple pages and multiple documents to the document attached. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, also, does the workflow work for GL entry approval? Uh, I'll have to double check that one. I believe it does, but uh, I'll have to double check because they made so many revisions. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I'll get back to you on that one. Okay, perfect. Um, and we will be providing, I'll be providing Raymond with this full list of questions after the webinar. He'll be able to address all of these offline, as I mentioned before. No problem. Okay. We don't have any other questions popping in yet, but usually people do need just a moment to collect their thoughts and uh, get those through. So just quickly here, I wanted to uh, grab the presentation back. I'm going to um, just give you some information about that, those webinars that I was explaining. Uh, we do have a page on our website that is a resource for you. It's going to have the, this, it's this particular URL here. It has all of our webinars that are actually scheduled out and their registration links. You can see those divvied up by uh, product, so if you want to dig entirely into GP or entirely into Power BI, you're able to do that. If you, um, as I said also, if you have any suggestions about future topics you'd like to see, not just Power BI or GP, if there's anything in the world of dynamics or in uh, auxiliary systems that you'd like to see, please do let us know. We're in the middle of a lot of content development right now and it's a great time to catch us and help kind of guide some of these topics as we go forward. So feel free to do that. See here, double check the question pane one more time. Looks like we're, looks like maybe people have exhausted their questions. So I'm just going to throw up this contact slide for Raymond. Uh, you'll see his email address and his direct phone line there. I will also be providing, as I said, the slide deck and the link to the recording after the webinar and follow up that with that, uh, with those resource links that Raymond did mention. So you'll be getting all of that in your inbox very shortly. And it looks like we're able to give people back almost or just over 20 minutes of their hour, which is always a great thing. Everybody wants uh, extra time in their workday, especially when everybody thinks that you're busy. So, um, Raymond, did you have anything else that you'd like to add as before we let people go? Uh, no. If, uh, if there's any of these topics um, that you'd like more information on, we'll be definitely sending out documentation against these items. Uh, the two questions, I should be able to get back to those pretty quickly. Um, I just have to double check something on my image and I should be able to answer those pretty quickly. Um, even though th throughout, uh, if you don't have any questions now, if you have any questions you know, throughout the next week or the month, uh, feel free to send me an email and I'll be able to uh, address them or to look them up if uh, I don't have an answer for you. Perfect. Yeah, it's a great reminder. Okay, well, no, no new questions have come through. We might as well go ahead and give everybody back a little bit of their hour. Thank you so much for joining us today. As I said, we'll have more topics coming soon, and hopefully we will see you on another webinar. Thanks, Raymond, for the great content. This was great work. Thank you. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful day.